So, you want to be a decoy at 43 years old with three weeks notice. Let me start by saying, in the decoy world, I'm a baby. But I've always had an interest in decoy work. So the first time I ever took a bite was on my uh, school work experience with the Royal Marines, where they stuck me in a sleeve and I was literally bitten by the bug. Over the years, I've had lessons from IGP handlers. Um, I've done decoy work for security dogs and teams. Um, I've played around with various different types of bite work but it wasn't until about three years ago where i thought i really quite fancy putting some time and energy into this to see if i can be any good at it now just over two and a half weeks ago my coach comes up to me and says there's a test in a couple of weeks time i think you should do it can you get to toledo i said yeah because why wouldn't you take an opportunity like that only then realized that actually things are stacked up against me quite a lot. The first part is the exam. It's a written exam. I know that I have a fantastic name, Fernando Cristobal Brown, and that name, <laughs> believe it or not, doesn't mean that I speak fluent Spanish. So there's a physical test, which include a slalom course that you have to do in the suit, and then there's a 1K run. I can, I can run one kilometer. So anyway, I start training and I start running and a week before the test and my ankle swells up and it turns out I've damaged one of the tendons in my ankle. <laughs> he said, three weeks, no sport. I've got a test in a week and he's like, well then one week, no sport. <laughs> so part one, Written test, different language. Part two, physical test, dodgy, uh, dodgy ankle. Part three is working the dogs. Because dogs have been doing this for three years now. Solidly, twice a week, fucking bam, 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 bam. As well as practice session with my own free mallies. And my girlfriend trains Mondo Ring as well. So I'm quids in. Like I have put the time and effort in. I know what I'm doing here. Unfortunately, there's a big difference between a training do decoy and a competition decoy. The training decoy's job is to teach the dog, is to, is to build the confidence of the dog, it's to show the dog all the different pictures it might come across um, in a competition. The competition decoy's job is slightly different. His job is to steal the points before I even get started. I had to buy a book, a decoy book. I had to go and get a, a medical at a doctor's to say that I'm okay to take part in risk sports. Oh. See how we get on. So, let's see how we get on. Man, I feel like I've set myself up to fail. Oh, just the relief. No, it's not over yet. I've still got another day to do. Um, <clears throat> but it's the decoy work. But I want to say it's a translation issue. Uh, um, and I felt like I'd scraped through. Nobody wants to scrape through anything. And then we went onto the physicals. I feel like I redeemed myself a little bit. So you have to do a kilometre run. It's split into two parts, 500 metres and 500 metres. Um, <clears throat> And uh, I did it in three minutes 10, which is um, fast for a fat old man like me. <laughs> so I'm very pleased about that. Um, so there was that. Uh, and then we did the sprints uh, where you do a slalom. Uh, so you do a sprint forward, slalom up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and then back. And uh, I was second fastest on that out of the whole, whole competition. So I'm uh, really, really pleased with that. Um, so I've, I've, I've put everything into that. I'm feeling 
like if I fail everything tomorrow, like then I felt I, I would feel like it's a fair fail. I fucked something up and it, it was an error. So I'm excited. I'm excited for tomorrow. Tomorrow's the bit I love. So come on. And Joe, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for everything and for tolerating me being an arsehole. What? What? What just happened? Seriously though, what, what, what just happened? So that night I go to bed and I go, right, I've got to get some last minute studies and I've got to shout out a friend of mine called Nake uh, from the UK who's a Mondial Ring decoy who was sending me questions and just like helping me study and it made a massive impact. I had a chat with him the day before I left um, and it was a bit of a turning point for me because I felt like I'd grasped some of, some of my usual confidence back. So talking to Nate was a big turning point for me, thank you. The other turning point that Nate did was in, to introduce me to a, a lad called Ravz, Ravzan, 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 that man, um, Mikel, and he was a fucking legend. He really, really helped me out, so uh, with translations. And I'll tell you where Mikel came into his own. As you do, when you're stressed, you can't sleep very well. So I wake up at three o'clock in the morning, all right? I wake up at three o'clock in the morning thinking about the bites where I start, okay? How many steps I can take forward, what motion I have to do with the stick without touching the dog, how much pressure I should put on the dog for different levels. And I'm talking through every different possible scenario that might go on. And I felt all right up until the briefing. So the briefing happens and it is in very complicated, very fast Spanish. Uh, <laughs> what? Thing. And I listened to the man say, does anybody have any questions? My arms are like concrete, I can't lift them. I'm like, I've got all the fucking questions, but I can't, I don't even know where to start. I'm, f I've, Fucked this up. Mikhail comes over, basically talked me through that there's gonna be two decoys on the defensive handler and that um, they're gonna choose two separate dogs. One, um, one that you're gonna know and one that you're not gonna know and you're gonna do these different exercises with each dog and, and basically not to panic. It's been a long time since I felt my fight or flight system kick in like it was doing then. And I fucking, honestly, I was so nervous. By the time it got to my test, I couldn't concentrate properly because I needed a piss. And we're gonna start with the object guard. I'm fine, I feel comfortable with this. So I nonchalantly walk up to the outer circle and uh, throw in a wave, all right? How's it going? As if I'm gonna go over there. And before I know it, before I enter the circle, the dog comes running out and bites my hand. And now I'm like, hmm, <laughs> fuck. Like, where did that come from? So he's now my hand. Off my game. I had a plan to hold the accessory out so that I could escape and dodge him and then try and steal the, the object. Didn't work out. He came fast. I lost my bottle. He came fast, hit me hard. Um, and I was just like, oh God, this is, this is all going to pot. Didn't feel like I was fluid. I felt like I was a fucking robot. Like I didn't know how to move or catch a dog. Over the, the period, I started to relax in some and my defense was good. I felt like my defensive handle was good. I felt like my frontal was good. I felt like my escape was pretty good, except for I started way too far back. But some of the attacks went really, really well. And I walked, they, once it was all finished, they called me over to the tent and I, and stood in the shade and I just thought, you know, it is what it is like. And then they told me I passed. So excited. Um, and the guys on the, the, on the course were properly sound, like really, really nice. And there's a couple of people that I really wanna kind of mention. First, there's that uh, Mikel and Ruben you two guys, um, thank you so much. I know Ruben isn't gonna watch this much English, um, but I do really, really appreciate it. Secondly is Savvy or Xavi, um, 
who was one of the judges. The other two judges were dead friendly, like super nice, really, really nice. But Xavi especially was just, I felt like he really gave a shit. Like, not that I felt like they all gave a shit, but I felt like um, he could understand how much this meant to me and how important it was to me and that I didn't want to fucking lose it. And honestly, I, um, you know, he's not going to be watching this either, but thank you. If, you. if you watch it, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And then, of course, there's an enormous thank you, I have to say, to Manolo, who put his dog forward um, and allowed me to work his dog, and, as well as the other team. That, I don't know who they are, but they, thank you for letting me use your dog. And, of course, the biggest thank you has to go to David from Dog TM. David, I've learned so much um, studying with you for the last three years, just and you tolerating my questions and my fuck ups and uh, and just showing me the way forward. I'm really, uh, I, I'm just really pleased that not only you are a good coach, but you're also a really, really good friend. So David, thank you from Joe and myself. Thank you so much. Um, Mondia ring decoy, man. Ooh.